Well, last week I asked if the ASX could play catch up to global markets. And this week I'm going to ask if in fact we've overextended. Hi everyone, welcome to the Traders Circle Weekly Market Update. Today is Tuesday, the 20th of June, 2023. And just before I get into it, you do need to be aware that what I say is general advice only. It does not consider your personal financial circumstances and you have to decide if what I'm saying is appropriate for you. So today the ASX uh, or our XJO closed higher for the seventh day in a row. Really an extreme run and uh, yeah, you know, what a week it's been. I did ask last week if we would play some catch up and catch up we did uh, well and truly. Uh, so yeah, global markets have rallied all throughout uh, the month of June and we actually ignored that for the first two weeks of the month and then across the last week, obviously, we've lifted from roughly 7,100 index points on the XJO up to a close of about 7,360 today. So it is a, a huge move in such a short period of time. It's particularly huge when you consider the backdrop of uh, you know, fairly negative economic fundamentals for our market, for our economy. And um, yeah, you know, uh, we'll touch on some of those shortly, but uh, it does look uh, like perhaps, at least in the short term, I think we've maybe overextended ourselves. So we'll check in on that next week, see if I'm right about that. But I did just want to say that, um, yeah, I think uh, such a large move in sh such a short period of time without a real positive fundamental change for the market, I think it does, does look a bit like an overextension. And it could be things like short covering from people who are short the market, uh, yeah, people closing um, bearish positions, Momentum traders, algorithmic traders that see the, the jump in bullish volatility, that see the lift in implied volatility, uh, adoption strikes above the market. And um, yeah, all, all of those factors conspiring to force us higher and higher. So I did want to touch on uh, the RBA and they announced or they released their monetary policy meeting minutes today at 1130. And uh, following that, our market took another leg higher. So just before the release, we were at around 73.10 index points on the XJO. And after that, we jumped to about 73.60 uh, for, for towards pretty much the end of the session. So we jumped about 50 points following the release of those minutes. In the minutes, they basically talked about the narrow path between bringing inflation back under control and uh, keeping um, unemployment from rising too much, uh, keeping the economy on even keel. Um, and they said that that path was sort of an uh, increasingly difficult one to walk. Now, outside of uh, those two sentences there, most of the rest of the minutes really talked about uh, the economic weakness of Australia, the decline in you know, economic growth, the decline in uh, discretionary spending, the fact that people are still spending a lot on uh, you know, staples and um, you know, insurance, mortgages, things that they have to spend on, but discretionary spending is coming way down. There's, uh, you know, issues in retail sales and things like that. And they talked about the, the, uh, the stability and strength of, you know, the economy, uh, both domestic and international. And that was what they really, really focused on. And to the market, that really says that, you know, we're basically worried the economy is going to get too weak. We're worried that, uh, you know, the the economy will roll over, we're worried we might see a recession or something like that. And really, I think that's kind of uh, outside of, of their mandate. You know, the RBA first and foremost is trying to uh, look after inflation, trying to keep, you know, Australian money, Australian currency from devaluing too much. And then secondly, that their, their job is employment, maintaining full employment. And then finally, maybe after that, maybe you could argue the third mandate is economic strength, but only after first inflation and second employment. Now, employment is at unemployment is at all time lows, pretty much, and inflation is still exceedingly high. So the fact that today's statement didn't say we're going to have to keep going hard on rates is really disappointing, really disappointing. And for me, it shows that the RBA is kind of straying from, well, dare I say the narrow path, straying from their mandate and uh, putting out a political message more than anything to say, oh, we're worried about this, we're worried about that. Well, you should be worried about inflation. North of 6%, uh, you know, core inflation sticky. Um, unemployment low, you know. To me, that says they have to keep going hard, have to keep being hawkish, and instead they put out this, I thought, pretty underwhelming, pretty weak 
uh, you know, political statement more than anything. Uh, not really what I think a monetary policy institution should focus on and uh, not a good look for the RBA. But it is a good look for the market. It is a, a bullish case for the market. And the market might read that and indeed did read that and say, well, yes, inflation might still be a problem, but that doesn't mean the RBA will keep going as hard as they have done. I still think July is live for a potential rate rise. Uh, but I think after today's announcement, the market will be having other thoughts. And indeed, we did see bond yields start to come down after the, uh, the statement was released, the monetary policy meeting minutes were released. So uh, like I said, and like the RBA alluded to, we are seeing a bit of a decline in the Australian consumer. Um, retail sales volumes are down. Uh, retail spending per capita is down. Uh, only, you know, retail sales only being kept up by, you know, population growth and, uh, you know, obviously price increases. Um, and when you look at certain areas of retail spending, the more discretionary sort of spending, uh, you know, that is really, really being cut back. And uh, that is something I wanted to talk about. We could see a bit of a two speed market forming here in Australia, where we see selling in some of the more discretionary stocks, but we see buying in some of the more staples based stocks. And so, in fact, over the last week, we've seen reports from AGL, uh, who's doubling or forecasting that they're going to double their profit. And um, that's on the back of them lifting uh, their prices for energy, for electricity and gas. And obviously, they've been able to do that uh, under the backdrop of inflationary expectations. But it is, again, rising off a pretty low base. We also saw IAG, an insurance group, announce uh, an increase in their profit guidance. And again, that was on the back of being able to lift uh, the price of their premiums. Uh, so a bit of a two speed situation starting to form with the Australian consumer having to keep spending more and more and more on things that they have to buy. And as a result, cutting back more and more on things they don't have to buy. And that is something that we'll have to keep an eye on. I think it is something that is being driven by a little bit of profiteering from large corporations uh, playing on the inflationary expectations of the consumer. And we'll have to see how that sort of progresses from here. So looking at the market, this is our XJO. And when we spoke last week, we were languishing around the 7100 level. And I did mention that we could play a bit of catch up to global markets. And that's exactly what we've done. We rocketed from 7100 to today, 7360. Uh, and we did test the 7370 key resistance level. I do think we're a bit overextended in the short term. I don't think anything has really fundamentally changed for our market uh, in the past week, other than maybe today's RBA minutes were a bit more dovish than expected. But otherwise, I still think that it's a pretty difficult situation for our market, uh, particularly with a lot of commodities prices still trading well below their levels from a year ago. Yes, iron ore's recovered somewhat, but it's still well off its highs from a year ago and uh, perhaps looking like it's topping out over the, the past few days. And uh, so my expectation would probably be that we hold resistance around these levels and perhaps sort of come back to trend, come back to uh, you know, 7,200 in the longer term trend, perhaps. Looking at the US market, they've obviously rocketed higher for the past month as well. They broke through the key 4,200 level after testing it a few times. They then broke 4,300 and maybe found some resistance around 4,450. They are a bit overextended in the short term as well, I feel. Uh, their economic situation is quite a bit better than ours in that their CPI is now at 4%, not too far beyond target range. Uh, but their core inflation, their core CPI is still a bit sticky. So we will need to see that start to uh, come down as well, I feel, for their market to really rally. Um, but in the short term, I do think it's a bit overextended. Perhaps a pullback to 4300 and maybe the longer term trend. All right, guys, that's it for this one. It's been a big week for Australian shares, big moves higher. Will it run out of steam here? We'll have to wait and see. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.